So, good morning uh, and welcome to this uh, licentiate thesis defense with Sayed Morteza Ebadi. Um, Morteza has done research on plasmonic waveguide structures. Uh, the work has been done here at Mid Sweden University. And he will soon present his work and defend his work in a discussion. My name is uh, Jonas Sörtegren, and I'm an associate professor at Mid Sweden University. I have been the supervisor for Mortesa, and I will be the chairperson of today. Um, additional supervisors have been um, Max Jan, who is an associate professor at KTH in Stockholm. And we can see if we can hi, uh, make that picture bigger. Maybe Inger can, can do that if that works. Mm. Uh, supervisor has also been associate professor Magnus Hummelgård at Mid Sweden University. Uh, hello, Magnus. Yes. And um, yeah, um, the main person of today is Mortesa. Um, the second main person is the opponent, uh, Carl Heglund. Uh, Carl Heglund is an associate professor from Uppsala University. Um, he got his PhD from Chalmers on surface plasmon for solar cell applications. He has been at Stanford and he is now a, an associate professor and a, a senior lecturer at Uppsala University. So uh, the procedure is as follows. I will soon give the word to Mortesa, who will present his work. And uh, after that, there will be a short break, a five minute break. And then there is time for a discussion between the opponent and the respondent. And when and after that, the word will be given to the audience to ask questions. Um, and then we close, um, or then we, uh, the, the supervisors and the opponent will join another digital room. So we will leave this room. Uh, and uh, after discussion, we'll come back and declare the, the decision of, of this dis discussion if um, the respondent has passed or failed. Uh, so we will, we will, after a short break, then come back to this digital room and declare that. And uh, after that, uh, there will be, for the people that, that are here in Sundsvall, there will be uh, some food and, or something to eat and something to drink in the S house. So that's the procedure. Yes, so I will um, now give the word to Mortesa. Uh, I will first ask if there are corrections to be done to the thesis. And when, when Mortesa has commented on that, he will present his work. And the thesis has the title Design and Numerical Modeling of Plasmonic Structures at Near Infrared for Telecom Applications. So please, Mortesa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jonas and audience. Uh, to begin with, there is no correction to the licentiate thesis. And I would like to say hi and welcome everyone on the Zoom meeting, the external reviewer, Carl, my supervisor team from beginning, and everyone that is helped me over this journey. So I'm going to present my licentiate thesis in engineering physics entitled Design and Numerical Modeling of Nanoplasmonic Structures and Near Infrared for Telecom Application. The, I, the main reason that we have pursued this field of research is that there has been huge demand for transporting 
extreme amount of data at high speed, along with miniaturization and energy efficiency technology, whereas the current CMOS-based electronics has been facing several challenges. The outline of this presentation is as follows. First chapter would be a background and motivation of the work. In the second chapter, it would be a discussion about material characteristics and analysis of plasmonic waveguides. Third chapter will allocate to the design of optical resonator and numerical results. And finally, in the fourth chapter, there would be a conclusion and future direction for this PhD research work. So first chapter, background and motivation. The current CMOS space electronics has been facing several challenges, specifically thermal management, scaling down the complementary metal oxide semiconductor or CMOS based electronics because it's reaching to its fundamental limit of an atom size, further cost reduction and energy efficiency. Specifically by 2030, up to 25% of global energy generation would be utilized by computer-based technology. As a result, we would like to reach to a sustainable solution for integrated circuits. The solution is found to be photonic integrated circuits, which offers high bandwidth, speed enhancement, low loss, functionality per area, cost effective, immunity to electromagnetic interference, CMOS compatibility, and ultra-fast response. The second... Now, I would like to show a, a picture about plasmonics in medieval. Plasmonic is considered to be a promising platform for development of integrated circuits. In this figure, which is the monastery surface plasmon in medieval. Uh, it shows a gothic a stained glass rose window of Notre Dame de Paris, the cathedral. The color originates from localized surface plasmon excited in gold colloids or nanoparticle, which then embedded in the glass matrix. A localized surface plasmon is the result of confinement of surface plasmon in a nanoparticle size comparable or smaller than that of the wavelengths of the light used to excite the plasma. So in order to create uh, in order to create this vivid and bright color, when the light is irradiated to this metallic nanoparticle, the oscillating electric field causes the conduction electron to oscillate coherently. Second chapter. In this chapter I would explain material characteristic and analysis of plasmonics waveguide. There has been several emerging materials technology like plasmonics, metamaterials, 2D materials, diamond transparent conducting oxide, phase changing materials, and et cetera, et cetera. Plasmonics specifically can be achieved by using several other materials like 2D materials, refractory plasmonic materials, novel materials, among others. However, we chose to make use of novel materials for the advantages such as established fabrication processes. Plasmon exists in ultraviolet part of a spectrum. For example, novel materials like copper, aluminum, gold, and silver, especially, specifically gold is biocompatible and can be used for sensing and biosensing application. It offers high field concentration and a small footprint. However, at the same time, there are of course several disadvantages associated with these novel materials like relatively low melting point, low chemical instability, lack of tunability and high solubility. However, in this work, we work on plasmonic only based on novel materials. So what is plasmon? Surface plasmon polaritons are electromagnetic surface waves that are, co that are propagating at the interface of a metal and insulator. Metal and insulator medium. 
and are coupled to free electron movement of plasma gas. This give rise to the confinement of surface plasma at the metallic interface and help us to ex uh, achieve extremely high field concentration guiding wave at sub nano wavelengths, among other things. We have used plasmonic waveguide is based on multi-layer systems. So we have used silver as a novel material in this thesis. On the left graph, the blue curve showed the complex, the real part of complex dielectricity of silver, whereas the green curve shows the imaginary part which accounts for absorption in the silver. The third chapter would be plasmonic, the next would be plasmonic waveguides. Generally speaking, there are two types of plasmonic waveguides, metal insulator metals, MIM, or insulator metal insulator or IMI. However, for the case of integrated circuits, because MIM waveguide offers significantly higher field concentration with, with an acceptable losses, this is the favorite choice for integrated circuits. As we can see, we have a multi-layer waveguide. The top layer is metal, like silver. The middle layer is uh, insulators, such as air. And the third layer can be another metal, but for the symmetry, we use also silver. In this case, we use the Maxwell equation with appropriate boundary condition to obtain the dispersion equation for MIM plasma waveguide. We first consider a p-polarized or transfer magnetic wave in the structure that propagate in the x direction. Due to the optical is isotropy of the two media, there is no loss of generality in choosing this direction. In a wave of polarization, polarization, the magnetic vector is perpendicular to the plane of incidence. The plane defined by the direction of propagation and is normal to the surface. So after using Maxwell equation and taking, making, applying the appropriate boundary condition, for example, continuity at the interface, we reach to set a, a set of equations, one for TM modes, one for TE mode. However, we realize that surface plasma polaritons only exist for TM mode in planar structure because for TE mode, the wave under experiences a cutoff mode and the dielectric thickness would be high and gives right to the exponential decay and allow for extremely high extension ratio. So plasmonic waveguide only exists for TM mode in planar structure. As we can see, this is called dispersion equation for plasmonic MIM waveguide. Based on this, we have a cotangent hyperbolic and tangent hyperbolic. So we have therefore a symmetric and anti-symmetric field, symmetric and anti-symmetric field in plasmonic waveguide of which both are our TM polarized wave. Next, I would like to explain the numerical methods. There are several techniques that can be used for solving Maxwell equation in optical system. The two most important ones is called finite element method or FEM for frequency domain solver, whereas we have finite difference time domain or FTTD for time domain. We used FEM at, in this work because it enabled us to model curved and fine structure. It provides more accurate solution because in order to solve partial equation, partial differential equation or Maxwell equation based on finite element method, we discretize the entire domain to a small subdomain and this lead to a set of linear equation. Then we apply boundary condition and solve, it, solve the Maxwell equation on each subdomain. And finally, we make a superposition to achieve the output response. And that is why the FEM is offering more accurate solution than FTTD. And it is extremely efficient for resonance structure, which is also the base and core fundamental of this work. However, finite difference time domain also is a very versatile word. For example, it can be used for broadband or sweeping frequency if it enables us to incorporate nonlinear and anisotropic behavior into material. 
and it's useful for modeling electrically large problem. Third chapter, we would like to discuss now the design of optical resonators and later discuss the numerical results that we achieved. For this, there are several techniques that can be used for analyzing plasmonic waveguide. The first is transmission line model. The second is couple mode theory. And the, the third is mode matching. At the same time, when we are going to design our plasmonic structures, we take into consideration the three conditions that are mentioned as follows. First is we would like to have high, high transmission and or absorption efficiency based on different application. If it is filtered, we would like to have higher transmission. If it is absorber, we would like to have higher absorption. At the same time, we would like to realize these novel resonators within an ultra small scale structure which offering a small footprint. And finally, we would like to have, be able to tune the operating wavelengths, especially at telecom wavelengths for filtering applications or at visible wavelengths for absorber. The first approach is transmission line model. In order to be able to make the analogy, which is based on microwave circuit theory to apply for a plasmonic waveguide, we need to achieve a characteristic impedance of a MIM waveguide with its propagation constant. Propagation constant of the plasmonic waveguide can be achieved by solving the dispersion equation, as I mentioned previously. The characteristic impedance can be achieved by taking integral over electric field divided by on a closed surface of magnetic field. Then if we further apply the simplification and tailor approximation, we reach to the conclusion that the characteristic impedance of an MIM waveguide is dependent on propagation constant beta, the width of insulator medium divided by Const by dielectric constant of metal multiplied by operational radio operational radial frequency and the capital W accounts for unit wave unit length of the structure which is usually around one micrometer. So now we have the characteristic impedance and propagation constant. Therefore, we can make use of this analogy from microwave circuit to apply for plasmonic structure. The first example is a plasmonic stop structure on the left and on the right is equivalent circuit model. We use uh, in this method, we model the equivalent circuit based on the input voltage and output voltage because plasmonic waveguide is a multi-layer optical system. The favorite method is called transfer matrix method. So we write the equation and related the input voltage to the output voltage. Here I have to mention that there, we assume that there is no incoming wave from output port. That's why we have zero in the output port in this second array. And the T matrix actually depends on two parameters. The first A, which demonstrates and accounts for the wave propagation among the the stop resonator and the input and output waveguide, whereas the B is uh, used for demonstrating the coupling, coupling effect of introduced a stop into the equivalent circuit. So after some calculation, we reach to the point that transmittance of a plasmonic sub resonator can be achieved with this mathematical expression. The, the first part demonstrate that the, the transmission is dependent on the characteristic impedance of the waveguide and the stop section. Whereas the second section, the exponential field, demonstrate the nature of plasmonic waveguide, which, uh, which is a decaying wave along the metal insulator interface. And it's also depends on the propagation length, which is defined at the, 
a distance th through which the wave reaches to one over E of its initial value. So now we have the stop structure and we would like to discuss this numerical result. If we have only one stop, we create a wide flat top band pass at near infrared or telecom wavelengths aligned to other resonance. However, if we add the stop resonators more, for example, two, three, four, five, that would be interesting to know what would happen to the output signal. So as we can see on the right side, by adding more and more a stop resonator to the structure, we are able to tune the uh, bandpass filter and also shifting to the shorter wavelengths compared to when we only have one. At the same time, the dip in the transmission that caused is as a result of the reflectance in the cavity. So based off in discussion, we proposed a multi-purpose plasmonic filter based on a stop structure. Why we use a stop structure? It's because the ability to reduce the size of optical component, which offers a small footprint, offering a simple, simple structure, ease of manufacturing, and the ability that by adding the additional stop to the structure, we achieve a more degree of freedom to be able to tune the output signal. So in this structure, we have used five equal symmetric stop resonator, and we introduced two novel aperture-like step to the input and output waveguide. By doing so, we would be able to successfully generate two transmission resonance at telecom wavelengths. As I mentioned before, we use the equivalent circuit. The equivalent circuit for the line section can be used with propagation constant and characteristic impedance, whereas for the discontinuity or the stop, we use this parasitic element to model the structure. And additional aperture to the structure also bring about new phase difference to the structure. So now I would like to demonstrate the numerical result based on our structure. In this graph, there are, the transmission is shown for when we have three, four and five stop structures. As we can see, for the three of them, we have we have successfully generated two resonance at telecom wavelengths. However, because we were most interested to have two resonance at wavelengths 13, 10 nanometers and 15, 15 nanometers, it was found that, that with n equal to five resonators, we are achieving to have these two transmission resonance with efficiency of more than 80%. The next is to consider the effects of structural parameters. For instance, if we reduce the size of the S-stop to half of its initial value, we would be able to suppress transmission at telecom wavelengths. This is called line wavelength cutoff filter. And the cutoff filter defined where the transmit transmittance reaches to 1%. On the right side, we, we further tune the distance of the introduced a step resonator, introduced aperture resonator with the adjacent stop resonator. If we set their distance equal, we would be able to create triple transmission resonance at telecom wavelengths, which has not reported so far based on novel materials. Next structure is that we would like to create a multiple narrowband plasmonic absorber, which can found application specifically for sensing. So we are interested to have sharp, res sharp absorption resonance. We start with a simple structure. It's, it's similar to a fabric perot cavity when two mirrors are located with a distance or optical pass, if optical pass of R. The numerical result, it shows that it shows like a funnel-like resonator response. So now we would like for an absorber, we would like to have transmission and reflection 
either of them to be zero. So we try to make transmission point to zero. We realize that if we use the triangular arrays, which is all, one can say it's also like a stub structure with the point that we tune these two initial lengths that connected to the end of the stub. By introducing these three triangular arrays, we were able to successfully suppress transmission throughout the visible to near infrared. At the same time, to create multiple narrowband absorber. However, in this figure, we realized that there are unwanted oscillation specifically around and near the resonance peak. So we further would like to remove this one. And we came up, came up with the solution that we would like to make use of a highly localized plasmon or it's called channel plasmon polaritons. This offers the combination of a strong localization and relatively low dissipation in the structure, possibility of near, nearly zero energy loss at sharp bends, low sensitivity to a structural imperfection, broadband transmission, and compatibility with planar technology. That's why we have used these channel plasma polaritons. So we realized that by doing so and taking advantage of its characteristics, we would be able to successfully not only generate transmittance zero throughout visible to near infrared, but also remove the unwanted oscillation. So the last step is to incorporate the past three figures and to create the last and final design structure. In this figure, we create four resonance, absorption resonance at, at visible and near infrared. We have nearly zero transmittance from visible to near infrared with, absorb with absorption efficiency of more than 81%. We further realized that if we tune the structural parameters, for example, the, this coupling distance between the adjacent input and the first triangle, we would be able to further enhance this absorption to 99.3%. The, the next novel structure is called tunable wide flat to band pass filter. We compared to similar structure like uh, cascade resonance gratings, corrugated ring resonator, nano disc, and rectangular base cavity that used to generate white flat top bandpass, we introduced several novel structures that significantly reduced the size of filters compared to the state of the art, offer higher transmission efficiency, better out of the bound rejection and sharper roll off. So the first structure is based on a simple stop structure again by introducing novel discontinuity in the stop in order to be able to widen the transmittance. On the right side, we introduce the equivalent section of this flat top bandpass filter. This section demonstrates the transmission line, which is Z accounts for characteristic impedance and beta for propagation constant. And these together demonstrate the phase shift difference that caused by this discontinuity in the structure, followed by this transmission line at the reaching to the second board. The numerical is that demonstrate that we are successfully generating a wide flat top band pass at near infrared. And for instance, one can say that simply by tuning the length of the resonator, we would be able to easily shift and widening the transmittance to longer wavelengths. The second structure for white flat top band pass are based on modified T junction. Based on microwave circuit theory, in order to increase the stop impedance, we introduce this novel distance K, this new, which introduces an equivalent load or impedance to the equivalent circuit. And further, we show that this leads us to 
create a wide flat band pass at near infrared. Again, for instance, there are several par structural parameters that one can use to tune the output. For example, if we use B, which is the width of this modified structure, we can easily widen the transmittance over a wider range. Then the second approach is couple mode theory. In this case, two couple mode resonator with their mutual coefficient kappa one to n two one are used. The concept of mode coupling is often used to describe the propagation of light in some waveguide cavities under the influence of additional effects such as external disturbance or nonlinear interaction. The basic idea of couple mode theory is that we would like to decompose all propagating light into the known modes of the undisturbed device, and then to calculate how these modes are coupled with each other when we introduce additional influence, like a small perturbation. So therefore, its modes are super modes, and the super modes are given by the electric field with their con uh, propagation constant. We assume that there are we coupling condition in this structure. We need to make use of inc uh, amplitude of the incoming wave in order to be able to you to achieve this coupling coefficient. So based on this discussion, we design a reconfigurable plasmonic filter at near infrared. We use a stop structure, however, by introducing two small perturbation, a rectangular and triangular, we would be able to create a reconfigurable response at the output signal. On the right side, it's the equivalent circuit model, which equivalent circuit based on the couple mode theory and showing the incoming and outgoing wave in the structure. We write a general equation, a couple mode for this structure. We realize for this, we need to have the eigenmode value of the structure because the resonance frequency is a complex number and, and it depends on the quality factor. So quality factor depends on the intrinsic loss in the structure and the coupling and the cavity-cavity coefficient. So we need to have this quality factor to be able to make use of this method. Finally, we after this calculation and extracting the parameters from the simulation and put it into this formula, we would be able to by making use of this expression, which demonstrate that is for a funnel-like resonance transmittance, we would be able to successfully obtain the output signal. The first response that I would like numerical to show is that we are able to generate a dual bandpass plasmonic filter by modulating the length, the distance between the to a stop and increasing the size of two small rectangular and triangular resonators that we introduced here. On the right side, by further modulating the distance between the stop resonator and the length of the stop, and for that increasing the length of the small perturbation, we are able to successfully create plasmon induced transparency, which, uh, which is found to be an ideal candidate for integrated plasmonic sensors because it offers higher quality factor, a small footprint and ease of fabrication. Plasmonic induced transparency can be achieved by two schemes. For example, the first is by creating a bright and dark mode coupling. The second approach is based on bright, bright mode coupling. The bright dark mode coupling is based on the destructive interference in the structure. And we use the concept of phase shift different to achieve a transparent window between two peak resonance. Now, the last chapter is conclusion and future direction of this work. 
We have shown that we designed and numerically modeling several nano plasmonic resonators. We achieved higher transmission and higher absorption efficiency compared to the state of the art research. We showed that simply by modulating a structural parameters, we would be able to easily tune the output resonance wavelengths. We described the performance of the structure and physical, we offered a physical insight to the device by describing the transmission line theory and couple mode of the optical resonators. And we conclude that based on this numerical result, we might be able to develop a platform for multifunctional and reconfigurable optical circuits. The future direction of this work would be to experimentally realize of plasmonic resonators, because what we have developed so far has been based on the 2D structure. However, in the real world application, the structure must be a 3D structure and has a final thickness in the, for example, Z direction. The, the next one, we would like to further enhance the application of plasmonic by incorporating with 2D materials. Further, we would like to address the CMOS con compatibility of the plasmonic structures in addition to incorporate it with silicon photonic technology, which is an established tech platform. And finally, we need to further address the trade-off between the optical field confinement and propagation lengths, which is the result of ohmic loss in the plasmonic structure. By this, I conclude my presentation, and I would like to thank each and every one of you for your time. Thank you.